Sage, Roy Havlick, Sid, Roy Ape Collector Space. We're here with 478 TV. Let's do it. Alright, we will say, man. I'm gonna have for the legacy, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Just go ahead and get into your background a little bit, man. Let you folks know how you rock and where you come from. Oh, this shit. Is that this shit? Basically, bro, when it came, I'm from Bloomfield, so like, I'm, I'm a chill person. Like, I never really thought I was gonna be doing music and shit, but like, all the people around me were just like, you sound good, you got a rapper voice, and I always do my words, so they're like, they're like, you need to rap, so I literally just, Started rapping like it wasn't no. I'm a, I planned it now like it just somebody decided to do. So me and Martel, just he the one who like really, but like we need to do this because we just had so much like different connection before that. He was like, bro, we we do this together. Shit gonna rock. So I was like, okay, I just did it. We legs. We just literally like what I tell you was no planning. We literally first thing we did we. We used to write like every night and we were recording this app called the Band Lab. And then basically, we would perform our song, we would get our speaker, we would go downtown, pop the streets, then I'd do it, speak in the mic, and just perform them bitches off the phone, like, and freestyle, and like, get people to come freestyle too. Like, basically, like how it used to be back in the day, hell, when hip hop started, just music out in the open. And that shit got shut down, but you know what I'm saying, legacy. So, we still, you know what I'm saying, eventually made our way around. And now we is. Okay, okay. We're gonna we're gonna take them back into your background a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Uh you know what I'm saying. Talk about growing up in Bloomfield, like what what were some of the things you saw coming up and like, you know what I'm saying, what what was the lifestyle like for you? Me really, my mom had me in the house, but like I stayed at all my homeboys who, you know what I'm saying, was around and like with out, so like I got the search for now, like what was going on around me and shit and like it never, it never made me comfortable because I always understood early on being black that it was dangerous for us. But then, like, when we really start to learn and see that, like, we do it to each other as well. And it's like, it's like, it's because, like, it's just a community thing, like, just for violence and shit. So, just like, that shit really made me want to be like, okay, we all, all my homework talent, whether they athletic, they make clothes, they make music, they doing something, like, all of those songs, like, bro, we can we can use that and show like where we come from or where like the shit we observe in that background like it don't really make us like we can change the narrative cause, like that was our background coming up but it don't gotta be the background for the next generation type shit so like looking back on that it's just like different experiences like friends lose friends we losing friends whether it's just to violence or accidents from violence it was just always like I never understood it cause we were so young so it's just like I always thought like that was like death was supposed to be something that happened when you got older type shit. So it's just never really like understanding it, but like still understanding it at the same time. Like I just knew we were supposed to be a part of that. So yeah, what what was your household like? You had you grew up both parents. Yeah, I had my my pops, my little brother, my sister. We were real family oriented. Like like I said, I was I went always in the house, but like I was for the most part with my family. Like at moves and shit, and then whatever, just at home kicking it like. So like that's why I never really knew what I knew but I never really like understood what was going around me because like I was with my family, like me and my sister, we in the backyard smoking a song, or me and my partner go to movies or something, like so I'm at I'm at school and practice or something or a game or something, so it's just like I was always with my family. So like mm -hmm. do, do you feel like you you know what I'm saying, you had more as opposed to like around a lot of people around you growing up didn't have a father, you know what I'm saying? That you had both your parents? In a way, but it ain't, it's not even something I appreciated until I got older, honestly, because, like, you, you kind of, you know what I'm saying? You always think your situation normal. That's just, like, the way you work as a person. So, like, I always thought two parent household was normal. So, I never really gave any thought until, like, you know what I'm saying? Get a little older, start to go to your friend's house, you know what I'm saying? Like, me, or, like, damn, he only got a mother, damn, he only got a pop, damn, he only got a little grandma. Then he lived, probably lived by himself. Like once we got them to a grave, we start living by ourselves. So you like, you really start to see like when you start to realize, like you got those people. Those are gonna probably be the most like independent people. But, like they ain't gonna really wanna hang out as much. They got shit to do or they can't really do it because they ain't got the resources to get those pay for. So you like, you start to see like, damn, that's why you can't really hang out with us back then. Like, damn, that's why you can't really do this. So you like, it do make you realize that it is in a way a privilege. You know what I'm saying? To have both parents, and I, it's, it's a blessing, but it's like you also see other people who made the best of their situation too. So, like, like I said, it's just all on perspective. Like, 
family is family. Even if you don't got your partner, your mom, like I know you got one of those homeboys, one of those homegirls that you like, damn, they your mom, cause they always on your ass, you know what I'm saying? So they're like, the family, like, I don't really like, look at this like, the structure of like, what it's supposed to be, like, mom, pop, whatever, brother, sister. I look at it like, whoever around you, and y'all just locked in trying to bet each other. Like, that's your family, and that's the biggest blessing, so like, I never really, two parent household never really like something that really just, I ain't gonna say it made me who I am, but it ain't never something I just really thought on. But like, I, everybody's my family. If I fuck with you, I fuck with you. So it's like, big happy family. Yeah. What in your household did you have in the sibling? Like, did you have in the sibling? I had my uh, older sister Darren, my little brother Seth. He, um, I won't, I'm sorry, Seth. He either 10 or he finna turn 10 or is 11. And I got my sister, <laughs> sister. she's 25, she's kind of at Auburn State. My sister, my dog, like me and my brother, like we boys, so like we chill and stuff. We don't really talk like that, you know, we just boys. So, but like me and my sister, like we were real close, and we kind of close in age. She's 25, I'm 21, so it's just like, that my dog. Like, what was it like growing up, like being like a middle child? I ain't gonna lie, the room about being a middle child and being kind of ignored is very real, like. A lot of my life was like, I ain't gonna say just coming the back burner, but like the age gap. So you like, you got my my sister finna go to college, you know what I'm saying? So my mom gotta get ready to pay for that shit. Then you got my little brother, he only like fucking away twofold. So it's like, you gotta really take me. So you like me, I'm just to do it. Like, I'm like, I'm like 10th grade, so like I'm not grown, but like I can cook my own food and shit. Like I ain't gotta remind my mom to take wake me up for school or some shit like that. So like, being the middle child, like, you really kind of just like. You got the family, like, they just, they don't not fuck with you. It's just like, they got shit going on. So it's just like, it, it's something I, I got used to that shit quick. Cause yeah. I ain't gonna say I don't like the family, but I, you know, I like me time. So like, once I started realizing like, oh shit, like this, this guarantees me time. Like, like so I was like, I'm gonna just focus on that aspect of it. But uh -huh. shit can get lame sometimes. Like, uh -huh. You do, sometimes like, might get that school, let that school to about 10 o'clock at night. True story. If you went west side, you know this is a true story. I'm about to get the brain something to eat one day or something like that. But it's just like, fuck it. I understand. Like, PBJ be smoking. Uh, Risen deliverance, I fly when I ride. I love the inside of mankind's pride. There's been two barriers and carrying to be yard and back. I be fond of boom bap cadence, the new rap greatest that pain created. I made